Hey guys, Mike G here for another video. This is going to be a comparison, or rather, seeing the difference between the book and the movie. In this case, The Thirteenth Warrior and Eaters of the Dead, written by Michael Crichton. Now, the book is actually based on the accounts of Ibn Fadlan. I am Ahmed Ibn Fadlan, Ibn Al Abbas, Ibn Rashid, Ibn Hamad. But uh, here, he, I think, interprets it in a way of all the pieces kind of coming together in a way that we think that would be more realistic to how he would interpret it. And some major differences between Eaters of the Dead and the 13th movie are as such. The whole book and movie are told in the perspective and accounts of Ibn Fadlan, a high noble and servant of the Caliph in Baghdad. His accounts were scattered in different manuscripts. Here in the movie it shows a brief narration telling of a jealous, wealthy friend of the Caliph not really enjoying the looks Ibn had given his wife in passing of his home. This is what causes the Caliph to send Ibn out on an emissary mission to the Northmen. However, in the books, even goes further into detail of the animosity majority of the upper caste that have towards the Caliph, and taking advantage of him through saying empty compliments. Though in all the gossip and conspiring, even admits that he does not feel surprised but wishes no part in it. He also does go to the home of a very important, very rich merchant on an errand from the Caliph to directly send a message for his eyes only. It is here that the man's wife finds even in the main area in which traditional messengers await. Even does disclose that he did become intimate with the lonely wife and was not caught because of how many locks there were on the door as the merchant arrived home. As the husband returned, the many locks allowed Eben time to put his clothes back on and his wife to flee deeper into their enormous estate. Though not enough time for him to get back to the waiting area and is found in the room next to the bedroom with a drink in hand as an excuse to get out of the hot sun and was thirsty for some water. It is here that the merchant urged the Caliph to send Ibn Fadlan into the next envoy mission to the north. In the movies of his travels towards the north, he joins a caravan with a translator who is a friend of his father's. And we fast forward to north of Turkey. In the books, Ibn is one of four men on their way to the north, the ambassador of Escaliba, two guides of Escaliba, and he does not account for servants unless they're cast in his accounts, but it is implied that he's bringing a big entourage with him, with transportations of the gifts for Escaliba. Along the way, they bring on their ambassador brother and camp in the month of November and halted until February before it heading actually into modern day Turkey. The trip through the lands of the Turks took weeks in the cold and spent time amongst them until they ran into treacherous Oz, warlord, that kept them under his control until they reached the land of the Bulgars, where they run into the Northmen along the Volga River. In the movies, we see brief pieces of the tradition of Northmen, where in the books, even inquires at each a new strange tradition or custom of the Norsemen that it does anger them. One of the customs being arriving by sea through the mist. It is a custom to stand for a full day in plain sight at arrival, and only on the next day could you depart your ship to navigate into the camp. No one will engage in any sort of acknowledgement in fear of the superstition of the mist. In the movies, we see the main leader, Vyglyph, die and Bolvai take charge and be claimed as the next ruler. Though in the books, he does have a rival, Thorkel, with some claim to it and tensions rise as they get close to the two dueling. Here's where Wolfgar from Hrothgar to seek aid against the Wendel. Even was trapped by Thorkel among the Northmen being claimed as some sort of witch and being the cause of the ailment for the deceased King Vyglyph. In the movies, the sacrifice of a slave girl was expected for the king or any highborn warriors. When even asks about it, they mention it is an older custom dying out, which in the books, it is not. You will not see this again, it is the old way. Majority of slaves in the books owned by the Northmen were other Northmen. They were treated very well. In fact, even slave women would instigate intimacy with the men, and a man could not say no or be considered disrespecting the woman, regardless of her status. To rape a slave, though, would be punishable by death. In the movies, even does not speak any other language aside from his own, and depends on the translator for the beginning portion, and out of nowhere learns the North tongue by watching and observing them in their travels. Where did you learn our language? I listened. However, in the books, Eben speaks many languages, but does not speak their specific tongue. Instead, he converses with one of the more well-learned Northmen in Latin. Though he does pick up a few words here and there to understand a little bit more, and this will happen throughout the book, not just in one section and all of a sudden he's fluent. 
In the movies, it skips straight to their arrival to the Northern Seas, whereas in the books, they pass by the lands of where he sought to go by one of the few seas they traverse through, though not before traveling through western modern-day Russia in the, to the forest. Also, before heading to Hrothgar, they did decide to stop at their main home to pick up a sword, a giant killer, sworn to have belonged to a giant. Though as they arrive, they see all have been killed by the Wendel. Here they continue their journey and find Vikings who offer no hostility to the group and help them resupply. There are no women among the Vikings, and they are trained warriors who use slaves to do the work they consider unbefit a warrior Viking, such as cooking. In the movies, Eben is seasick whilst the Northmen compatriots seem wild and prey to Odin, seeming eager for death. However, in the book, they stop every night on land so as not to be shipwrecked. This is no day to be close to land. Though the Northmen do play a joke in the books, with even unknowing the ways or animals of the North, they convince even that there are sea serpents that seek to kill men in the water. Though they are actually blue whales, even turns pale of fright and the men eventually laugh at him, telling them the only reason they attack the ship is to mate with it. They joke and say he is now as white as they are. In the movies, there are two oracles, or as they are referred to, angels of death. However, they incorporate the second oracle from the movie to include a role deleted from the books, the dwarves. They are as insightful as the Angel of Death, but it is actually the dwarves that tell the Thirteen Warriors to seek the fight against the Wendell, and to kill the Queen Mother by the Thunder Caves. They also tell the leader that he is to die in this quest. In the movie The Thirteenth Warrior, they sneak into the inner cave to infiltrate, leaving behind their armor at the entrance of the cave on land. There they make their escape, attempting to swim out to the Thundercliffs on the outside, whereas in the books, it's quite the opposite. They find a camp on land, but it is vacant, and then seek the dwarf's knowledge. Here's where they tell him, instead of sneaking in through the entrance on land, they actually enter from the outer cliffs where it is unguarded. They brought no armor and were only armed with some rope and knives. After killing a few guards, they found the queen fairly quickly, and like in the movies, the leader is poisoned while killing the queen. Unlike the movies, after the queen's death, the nearby Wendell flee in fear, leaving them without any resistance to head back to their horses, completely unopposed. And in the movies, after the final battle against the Wendell, even seeks to head home. But in the books, the son of the king, Hrothgar, tarnishes the leader who has died in battle. After having been seen fleeing from that same battle, even attempts to challenge him, but his friend who speaks Latin knocks him down to fight the son in his place. As his friend gets the upper hand, the herald of Hrothgar moves in to kill him from the rear. This is where even slays him, saving his comrade, his Latin-speaking Northman, Harya. Now, one major difference in the movie is that it is a slave girl that tips even off that the son has some other plans for the 13th warriors. But in the books, it was a friend of the king. He spoke directly to even, also knowing Latin, and didn't like the son. He was convinced and considered the son a fox, which in the Northmen terms means shifty and untrustworthy, what we'd call a weasel nowadays. Now, in the movie, even just pretty much takes off after the battle, uh, but it is actually delayed by the king himself. Even though his leader, who he came with, has fallen, the king wants him to stay and stick around, knowing that his son is incapable of ruling. And attempt after attempt, even tries to convince the king to let him go and that he'd come back. Even though it's a ploy to try to just let him go for the time being. The king refuses at every turn, however, and eventually, after a certain amount of asking, does get annoyed. But they do kill the son after this point, and in which it allows him to go seek the younger son left down by the Volga River. Uh, it would be him taking over after the king dies, and Hrothgar, who would be taking the mantle of leadership. Here, even finds his way out, and his friend, Harya, decides to stay back and wait there. Here, it is mentioned in the books that even though he did go up north, he failed in his task to actually reach the lands he was supposed to, in which they actually passed by it in one of their sea voyages, though he could only look at it from afar, only hoping that he could one day get back to his tasks so he can return home to Baghdad. And that's pretty much the end of Eaters of the Dead versus 13th Warriors. I did enjoy the movie, and I love the books. If you really like the movie, you'll really enjoy the book. It's actually a quick, pretty quick read. It's five hours on audiobook. If you guys are, prefer to listen to it uh, while you're driving or you're just listening to the radio, that's definitely more up your alley, just like I am. I love audiobooks. So check it out if you can on Audible. Uh, but this has been a pretty fun video, and this has been the differences between the two. And hopefully you guys enjoy that. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought. 
Otherwise, I'll catch you guys next time. This is Mike G, aka Lord Commander Guts, out.